Um, so, uh, so people, I think we're going to jump and we're going to do tonight again. You know, it's a Thursday evening where we are, you know, we are hearing, we are listening and we are hearing the word of God. So it's two things, listening and hearing. So you can just listen and that's almost okay because there is a power in that as well. But when you hear, it's also almost a step further that you are hearing for purpose. You are hearing what the Lord is saying with the potential to change, to bring change. Uh, just again, even tonight, it's a Thursday uh, uh, um, evening. Um, it, I believe it's today, the 14th, yeah, the 14th of, of, of October, the year 2021. There is, there will only be one Thursday evening like this. <laughs> That's now very deep. Uh, but it's so powerful because the word of God tonight, when you listen and then furthermore hear it, uh, you are hearing the voice of God that brings, I will always remember uh, Pastor Lambert, I, I have to mention this because it made a big impression, brings transformation, that is the potential, you know, from a worm, that process, transformation process to a, to a, into a butterfly, is that process and it's powerful that's what the lord wants even tonight so uh, but enjoy i i don't want to say relax uh because we're not here to take naps and so on but uh, hear the word of god let's be disciplined to hear the word of god for action in our lives and for transformation so let's uh, just pray and agree and uh, acknowledge the lord in our midst he's not the guest he's the you know he's he's, he's in our midst so father we thank you um in the name of Jesus Christ that we, we lift up, that we know, that we adore, um, that we were saved by, that we are rest, that, uh, that uh, we've been rescued um, and transferred into your kingdom through Jesus Christ. We acknowledge you, Jesus, as the King of Kings. You are supreme, um, highly exalted over everything, the King of the kingdom. All authority has been given to you to rule and to reign. And we are so fortunate or so fortunate, not the right word, Father, but so uh, um, thankful that we can be part of that kingdom. And even sitting next to you in heavenly places, a place, a position of authority, Lord, to bring your government and uh, your will and your kingdom on, onto this earth. We thank you for that, Father, that we can be part of that even tonight. Every person that is listening and hearing will be blessed because of the intent, um, because of just uh, coming on the intent of listening and hearing, Lord, they're already blessed. And the word of God has got his own uh, power and authority to do whatever you want to do, even in this evening. So we honor you, Father. We, the word of God is so great and so powerful. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, just to make the word alive. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to, I just want to share my, my screen quickly. I just want to get there. Uh, there you go. Um, I believe everybody can see. Just uh, maybe just if somebody can just maybe not wave, say I can see the presentation or the slides. Just want to make sure. Yeah, we can see. Okay, great I stuff. Can see. Okay. Okay, great stuff. Thank you, guys. So you can just uh, mute yourselves and, and hear and listen. And here we go. Uh, we're going to continue uh, from last time. Uh, we have heard and, and Owen has, has uh, ministered to us, even because it was really a ministering. Uh, but he shared the word or the uh, around the first uh, book um, to the Thessalonians that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. Now, tonight is the second um, we're looking at the second letter that he has written to the church in Thessalonians. And it's pretty much uh, in line with, um, you know, the first book. So Paul is the writer of this letter and uh, addressing the church in Thessalonians. It was a big city, um, a lot of things happening in the city. And we're going to have a look at it and how it relates to what is happening. You must always remember that when Paul writes to churches in those days, it's not a historic fact or information for us as Christians. No, it relates to our lives today. That's why it's that's why we call it the Word of God. It relates uh, to us today. It related to all um, uh, children, or let's say Christians over over the ages, New Testament Christians. Um, every letter written, 
And it was, was not just for, for churches that he wrote. It was for our lives today. It's very specific, addressing our individual challenges, um, addressing us as individuals, how we grow in the Lord, but not just individually, but also uh, corporately or collectively. So again, this letter, we're just going to have a recap on, on, on last week and, uh, and just a couple of things that stood out in the, in the, in the first letter to the, to the Thessalonians. And I'm going to read it to you just to, to get a bit of background. Um, so we read in 1 Thessalonians 1, 9 to 10, For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. So he's addressing the church in Thessalonians and just, just saying and engaging with them and giving some, some feedback and what, what his experience was with them. They tell how you turn to God, and that's a testimony, from idols. So he's saying, you, you uh, people, uh, you Christians, um, I've heard testimonies how you have turned to God from idols, powerful from idols, to serve the living and true God. Living and true God. Saying idols are dead, but serving the living God. God is more alive even than us. Um, a living God and a true God. And this is very important. I want to highlight this. And to wait for the sun from heaven. Very interesting. So he's, 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 he's uh, speaking to them and he's telling them that there's some good feedback. And he's also hearing from them that they are waiting for the sun from heaven. Very interesting. We're going to touch on that. You know, most of the times this is not part of our gospel. But uh, maybe I should even th uh, throw it in and, and I, I'm getting ahead of myself. But part of Paul's, very important, Paul's gospel or the, 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 uh, um, the teachings of Paul, the apostle, was that Jesus Christ will return. Very interesting. Not that this is he's definitely according to Paul and according to the word that we know. But part of his teachings was that Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming back. And, and you know, lately, and I don't know uh, in what background you have grown up, but, you know, people are very hesitant to, to, to speak about the return of Jesus. You know, and uh, tonight we're just going to touch on it. We're not going to go deep in it. That's a, that's a time, uh, uh, you know, a, a time and place uh, for another discussion. Um, but it's very important. Part of the good news of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, even when Jesus spoke, uh, spoke to his disciples and addressed him before he ascended, he said, listen, I will return. And I tell you, if we are maybe closer. If you think about time, God is not in time, but we are definitely closer than where, where Paul were at that time. But those people, very interesting, they were expecting Jesus to come and they really lived their lives according, you know, to, to be ready for the return of this majestic King Jesus. And uh, it's so interesting that we can, you know, we many times say, you know, uh, um, one day is like a thousand, uh, well, yeah, is, is uh, a thousand years is like one day before the Lord and it can be a hundred. What if, so it's, it, it's almost as if we, we are hesitant to, to, to really um, ex uh, to expect him to come, to return. If we aim to return, that expectancy and that, um, Lord Jesus, we're looking out. We are, uh, we are living our lives because we are expecting you. So it also shows and speaks about almost our attitude towards life because I still want to do this and maybe I still want to do that. And maybe I've got still cherishing this and yeah, maybe, you know, Jesus is good. But these people, based on the teachings, especially the Thessalonian church, but all the churches, he speaks about Jesus that is returning. And in fact, they were expecting him in their lifetimes. So he had a big teaching on that. We'll cover that now. So then it goes on, uh, waiting for the, for the son from heaven, that is Jesus, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescued us from the coming, coming wrath. 1 Thessalonians 4 says, brothers and sisters, he's addressing the church in Thessalonians. We do not want you to be in or uninformed about these are those who sleep in death. Now, this is again speaking about the return of Jesus, right? But let's read it and then I will explain to you and then we go on. Who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind. We have no hope for we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those. Interesting, yeah, look at the em emphasizing 
that uh, believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Right. So it speaks about the return of Jesus. Now he's addressing. All right. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming again, until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Ah, here it comes again. Come down. That's part of his teachings. Where is it found in our teachings? We are very sensitive about it. But here it is. It will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with a trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Now you're making a distinction. Uh, a, 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 a distinction almost or uh, um, uh, separate the, those who are that have died right so there's a concern there for these guys and also those who you know those who will be with the Lord when he comes and alive when he comes but in any case we'll, we'll look um, at that after that we who are still alive and are left with will be caught up together interesting this sounds like uh, uh, the rapture teachings. Now, I'm not going to get into that. I know it's very controversial and I myself is still thinking around it, but uh, uh, we're not going to touch it. But the main thing that we're going to look at tonight is, and I'm giving my theme away, is really eschatology, the end times. But the main thing is that we're all in agreement that Jesus is coming back. And that was part of Paul's teachings. In the New Testament, even Jesus himself spoke about that and addressed the issue. But uh, in uh, Thessalonians, um, he was emphasizing that. Now, this is still recapping of last week in the first letter. Right. So um, who are still alive and are left will, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Interesting. To meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And after that, we will be with him forever. Now we are with him forever, but this is in a different, in a, in a, a glorified body, constantly with the Lord, not uh, going in and out. You know, now Paul tells that we are hearing. You know, we can go in and we can go out and and so on. But we will be in a in a in a in a even in a bodily form in our presence. We will be with him forever in that state that is still coming. Yes, we can go up and we can, as the Lord um, uh, opens the heavens up. And that experiences with him that is happening, but we are still on this earth, but that will pass away. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Wow. So it's saying this is true. This is what I teach. And therefore, we need to encourage as the day of the Lord draws close. And this is just OK. So that was recapping of last week. So background of two Thessalonians. Now, this letter is closely written and it's closely linked to the first letter. And you will see the reason now. And then this was written around 51 after 51 years after the death of Jesus Christ, 5 1 after death AD, right? Um, this is a follow up letter written three to six months after the first letter. And this is important to know. So, why so quickly? Only three to six months. And this is, this is, I've done some research, and this is pretty, everybody's saying that is a, a letter, uh, um, and it was not. Uh, um, the norm for Paul to do this, there was a very good reason. We'll look at it. Why he has followed. He had a follow up letter, a follow up letter so quickly for the church in Thessalonians after his first address. So uh, with this letter of Paul, now this is the issue why two Thessalonians were written. There were some issues and still today an issue around and confusion around the return of Jesus Christ. Can you believe it? I never knew that really. That he really had a follow up. That two Thessalonians was really a, 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 a letter written predominantly to sort out the uncertainties and the confusion around the return of Jesus Christ. Because remember, I said to you that this is a, a first Thessalonians. It was Paul's part of his teaching. It was not. It was not. He was. He was ministering. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the ascension of Jesus and everything that goes, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what was included, this is powerful, is the return of Jesus. And those people there and even Paul himself were expecting Jesus to come at any time. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But what has happened? There was some confusion. And we've read it now. The confusion was really what happened to the ones that's already dead and what happens when Jesus comes which is now first and which is second. 
You know, those who are dead, will they rise? And that was part of Paul's teachings. They will rise first. And secondly, those who are not dead will just be caught up with Jesus. And the two will meet in the air. Amazing. It's amazing. People, you must go and read it. And I trust that even don't always take our word. That's a good thing to do. Take our word, but go and read um, the Bible as we discuss, you know, as we present to you. Go and, and find out even for yourself and just put the cherry on the cake as the re revelation comes in your own life. But people, the whole thing is, is about eschatology. And I don't know if you've heard this word eschatology, but we'll look at it now. Just to emphasize, 38% of all the verses that deal uh, in, in two Thessalonians deals with the end times, right? And that is what eschatology is all about. And we're going to, we're going to have a look at that. The word eschatology simply means, it's a big word, and I never understood it, really. But now I just had a look at it again and again. But eschatology simply means, it's a part of theology concerned with the final events of history, you know? Uh, uh, the final, the, the last days, so to speak. You know, the end times, I think that is, that's more clear to us in our understanding. The end times, the end of the world, according to the word of God. The end of the world as we, I don't know if there's a song, I think, the end of the world as we know it, but in any case. But according to the word of God, and, and we are, I don't know, there is, there is a very sensitive feeling around it to say, you know, Jesus can actually come in any time. And that's quite true, but it's quite evident. And I'm going to just to highlight, and it's a very, uh, it's not, it's not in deep because we can do that in another time and you can do that on your own. But what Paul is writing according to his, what he knows, not what he believes, but even what he knows, because he had those experiences with the Lord. You know, uh, you know that Paul was caught up in a lot of information and a lot of insight and revelation more than anything he got from Jesus himself. And that is a fact. Right. That is a fact. And the word of God tells us that. So Paul knew he had revelation on a lot of things. So he was ministering on. And I'm just going to touch on two major events, which is very important. And, and uh, um, that is still to come. And it, we, things are really busy happening. Now, I want to make it very clear. I'm not talking about I'm not pushing anything that the Lord is coming tomorrow. I'm not giving you a date. I'm not giving you times. In fact, for those who have just looked at my presentation, I skipped a slide because I thought, yo, I'm going to, that is not even my opinion, you know, but we're not going to get into, into the tribulation. And uh, some say, you know, the seven years is a tribulation or three years, or half of that. Um, and then Jesus will come. And, I, and you've heard a lot of things. And I know some of you are really busy studying it. Nothing wrong with that. But at the end, is about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ as he promised. There's a lot of things that he will surprise us, that we think we know. He will surprise us. But Paul is addressing in two Thessalonians. Very important. Now, why is he addressing this? Because it is for us also to know. Remember, it's not a history book and just for those for that time. It relates to what we are going through. And in fact, I've said in the beginning, I really believe that. That we are closer than than uh, uh, than the people there in Thessalonians at the time of his writing the uh, the letter. We are closer because there's definitely some things that are happening. And again, I'm not saying I'm not putting a date. I'm not saying this is definite. I'm just going to show you to get you all inquisitive and to get you all <laughs> ready for the return of Jesus. No, you are already ready. But I think we need to understand the times. Uh, that we are living in to an extent. But let the Lord be the Lord, right, in our lives, and let the Spirit of God guide us, because Jesus is definitely coming back. Thessalonians 1, 7b, and the, uh, the, he says, um, it says, um, so let's just go to uh, to the apostasy, sorry. So that is the third uh, third bullet point. So this is first. There will be apostasy, and that is what he's saying. Apostasy, first, in the end times, and he ministered this, and he is explaining the confusion that he experienced, that he heard of around the times, right? And, the, and, the, and they were saying that Jesus is coming and Jesus, Jesus is coming tomorrow and Jesus is coming. But he was saying and explaining to them, there is things that will happen first. So don't worry too much now. We are not in those times, he is saying to them. First that will happen is in Thessalonians 2 verse 3, uh, apostasy will come. 
And that is clear. It starts with the apostasy. Um, and yes, there's other things that we are seeing, that we are hearing of, and that's wonderful. Um, we're looking at, you know, the building, building of the temple. Um, there is, you know, there is a lot of things that's happening in the in Israel, in the Middle East, and, and so on. And Israel is becoming, people are going, you know, uh, 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 God's people, the, the, the Jews are going back to their land, to, to Israel. And there's a lot of things. So we've heard that before, and some of us are busy with that and so on. But there will be apostasy before the return of Jesus Christ. What is apostasy? Apostasy, people, it is happening. I'm not saying this is it because I believe it will escalate. As much as there is an outpouring of the Spirit of God, there is a falling away. I want us to understand this. It's not all rosy. There's people, there are people of God, and you might just know some of them, but they are falling away. Some people that have served God. But apostasy means I turn my back, I disconnect myself, and I turn the other way. Or they are just not living and up to the standard of God. They are not, man, they are just maybe even following idols again. Um, idols meaning, you know, entertainment. They, they, they fell, they are falling away. And Paul is saying, and he's showing to the Thessalonians, listen, there will be a great apost uh, apostasy. Apostasy will come, a great falling away of many but those who are in and those who will be coming in those who are coming the harvest will be coming in will be powerful they will be powerful they will be enlightened they will be anointed and uh, and the glory of god and that's what we know the glory of god will be upon them but there will be a great falling away of people that have been with the lord and it is happening i have i, I i've seen I've seen and heard, you know, on, 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 on our media platforms and social media platforms. There's a lot of things. Um, not everything is true, we know, but there's, uh, there's really um, some of the things are true. It's, it's, uh, um, it can be confirmed that there's big people that are falling away. Big people, I mean people of God that are falling away, turning their back, not serving Jesus, serving religion, serving other things. There will be a great apostasy. Second, the, um, the Lord Jesus Christ, um, just at the bottom, just uh, one down. Um, there will be a man of lawlessness. We know this. We've grown, grown up with it. Whether we understand it or not, it is very, but, but specifically, Paul is addressing, there will be a man of lawlessness, um, the son of destruction. And that's not the devil. It's very clear. It's not the devil. He's not speaking about the devil. He's speaking about the Antichrist. Antichrist. It will be one person. Now, there's a lot of references. I'm not going to get into it. But this is the truth. There will be one person that will, will, will have a throne in the temple. And there's a lot of bad things that happen will happen around it. What that is, I've got my opinions again, and I've got, but but my issue is not with that. I'm not focused on the Antichrist. What I do understand, very important, there's already an Antichrist spirit at work since Jesus died, even in the times of, 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 of Paul. But he was saying it's going to increase. But we are seeing again, there is an Antichrist spirit that is just, we are just seeing it. It's, it's happening. There's some stuff that are happening that is showing the Antichrist spirit is there. It's almost preparing the way of the Antichrist. Now, interesting enough, I'm going to throw it out there, and it's uh, uh, this is not gospel. This is just what I've heard, and maybe just to keep you thinking. Um, they say that uh, these people that are saying the Antichrist, the person is already here on earth. <laughs> interesting, interesting, just to get you thinking. But I don't want to bog you down. I don't want to uh, put a make it a um, there's, there's people specializing in eschatology. I'm not, I'm just we are just looking at the, at the book of two Thessalonians and what Paul is addressing. And that's also important to us to understand. Um, I'm sure those of you sitting here say, oh, Pastor Hannes, this and this and this, we know this and this, and we can jump on and we can tell you. Um, uh, not today. And it will be great to listen to your opinions and what you believe in. And at the end, people, at the end, it is all about Jesus. Our focus is Jesus the King. The return of Jesus that will definitely happen. All the other things will happen. It's the script is already written. It's already there. It will happen. Whether you believe it or not, it will happen. But we need to understand also scripture. Um, and Paul is just um, showing us a couple of things 
that's also well definitely re related to our lives. And then in and just we go to, to, to the bullet points up there, Jesus will be revealed from heaven. Everybody will see him or the people will see him. Now there's a, there's there's two there's definitely the, the people that believes in the rapture that Jesus will we will meet Jesus in the air and there's definitely reference to that. Remember what I'm saying because we are we, we're not going to get into uh, I don't want to make it a gospel, but if the word of God is saying that we will meet him in the air, then when Jesus come back again, interesting, just hear me, interesting, it says that his foot will touch uh, the Mount of Olives. He will come down. And so it's two, it can be two different events. I don't want to put my, 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 my head on it and I don't want to give you my opinion, but Jesus is coming back. Paul is saying Jesus is coming back. And he's explaining to the guys or to the to the Corinthians church, do not worry too much. You will meet Jesus, whether you have died and whether you are alive, you will meet Jesus Christ and he will be revealed. What a day it will be, people. What a day it will be. So it's not once once in maybe your whole life that you're meeting Jesus um, and some people on more frequent basis based, based on the will of God. This will be just an amazing event. Imagine. Imagine it's uh, it's you know it's it will be amazing that event when Jesus comes and there will be trumpets and they will be listen it's not he's not although he's coming like a thief in the light in the night the word says clearly but when he comes it's not silent when he comes he comes with a roar of heaven wow that is powerful that is powerful uh, he is Jesus the King right with angels he's coming. And then it also says that uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will gather with him. That is a fact. That is what Paul is saying to, to, uh, to the Thessalonian church. So Paul is addressing three issues in this whole, in this time of confusion. Because in that time, people were uh, um, experienced, uh, the church in Thessalonians experienced persecution, right? A uh, uh, bad um, persecution, and they were relate that were relating that or understanding that as really the end times. And he was saying to them, "No, persecution is just persecution because you love Jesus. Not necessarily that is the end time. However, every person that is listening, this is very important. Persecution is not something that you should run away from. When we hear persecution, we are." We are, you know, we're thinking we're going to, you know, be killed for God and we're going to be martyred and so on. Yes, that is true. But there's already persecution that is happening today. Very interesting. We will look at that now. Persecution is almost a test. Persecution is to, for the Lord to see how committed are we. He's not bringing the persecution, never. But persecution tells, tells the spirit world who you are. Persecution, how you deal with persecution. And Paul was addressing this issue in the midst of them waiting for Jesus to return, saying persecution is going to happen. It's happening with you and it's still going to happen throughout eternity. Well, throughout this, this uh, age of the church, it will happen. Right. But even so more, it will. It's going to increase in the end times. Now, I'm, I'm saying we are already in the end times from 2000 years ago when Jesus died. It is in times, but we are getting closer to some sort of time. How long it will, you know, how long it will be. And in fact, I do believe, yeah, it might not be 600 years. <laughs> right. Right. So the other issue that is so persecution is addressing that. Secondly, is addressing uh, the issue of uh, and we've spoken about the, uh, the whole issue around the return of Jesus Christ. And they believe sure, it's going to happen now. And again, remember what I say, those some are saying, but some of them already did. Will they meet Jesus first? Yes, he said, yes. They will. What will happen to us? You know, we, we haven't died. Is, is he coming? Yes, you will meet him in the air. So both of you, first the dead, then the, the those who are alive will meet him. So he addressed the issue and he sorted out the issue. And then interesting enough, so out of the blue, he's also addressing the issue of idleness, sitting back and waiting for things to happen. Wow. Waiting for the return of Jesus. Some of them people, and, and we will look at that, some of them were just very lazy. They did not want to work. There was some sort of mindset that I will, I'm just waiting it out. Remember, they were waiting for the return of Jesus any moment. So why is it necessary for me to work? Why is it necessary for me to, to be active is the right word that I'm looking for. And he's addressing that issue and he's very, very clear and very frank and all almost 
commanding and instructing instruct uh, instructing the church and the people of God there. Do not be idle. You have to be active, uh, involved. You have to work. So let's just quickly look at that. We haven't got a lot of time, but I'm just again the issue. It's about eschatology. It's about the end times, and it's pretty much more relevant to us today than the church there in Thessalonians, because Jesus did not come in the uh, in their time, but but. What has happened there is going to help us in the time that we are living in. And I'm not saying the Lord is coming in our generation. There might be other generations, but it's very relevant what is happening there in the church of Thessalonians. And when the apostle, the man of God, the messenger of God was instructing, instructing and teaching them. So uh, he is addressing the persecution. He was in the first place thanking God for the faith. And they are bounding in love. So he's giving them a really a good saying, listen, you are doing well. And he's in that he was saying to them and he was boasting to us and saying, I'm so proud of you that you are standing strong in your persecution. You are standing strong in persecution. People, we need to become strong. Let me put it to you very simple. We need to become strong because we think, you know, um, our own problems that we uh, create for ourselves is persecution. No, that is just your own problems that you have. We don't understand what persecution is in the Western world. It's only happening now. Persecution, in, uh, uh, um, according to the dictionary, I hope I'll find it. Here. I just want to quickly, um, quickly, uh, let's, let's see. And it's very simple, but I want to read you what, what persecution is. And then you will realize it might be happening to you already. I'm not talking about your own issues. I'm talking about there is an opposition um, from darkness and an opposition from, from the system of this world that is anti what you are carrying. So it's a persecution, he's saying, and Paul is addressing it. He's saying, I'm proud of you that you're standing strong. Uh, persecution says here, it's hostility. It's hostility. It's a hostile uh, uh, attitude or uh, against you. It's ill treatment, especially because of your, yes, your race or political or, relig or religious beliefs. It is oppression. That is simply just a general, uh, um, a general um, a definition and meaning of persecution. But the church, the church, the early church understood that. I tell you, those were very strong people because they resisted. You know, they resisted. They did not compromise. They did not give in. We give in because of our own problems that we create. But when it comes to the gospel and the kingdom of God, wow, you know, we need to become strong. And Paul is also addressing, we need to rise up. And he's boasting to other churches. In the latest, that he's boasting about the guys and uh, um, the church in the Thessalonians that they are going through persecution in whatever way people are against them, system is against them, uh, um, they are going through, uh, people are hostile to words against, against them, they marginalize them, you know, as, as the freaky people, the out people, you know, uh, um, there's no opportunities that are again because they are standing plainly for Jesus Christ and his kingdom. It is happening and I want to be I am not a prophet and I'm not going to be a bad prophet. But I tell you one thing, according to the word of God, according to the word of God, persecution is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's going to happen and is happening. But in that persecution, the people of God will rise up in strength. Always did, always did rise up in strength and glory will be our part. Not that we have to, but we are going to. But we will be strong in the name of Jesus Christ. God will empower us. The glory of the world. Remember what the word of God says. Darkness will fill the earth. It is a prophecy. Not just only for then. In Isaiah uh, um, 61, I think. It says, uh, um, you know, uh, about the glory of the Lord. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory has risen upon you. So the glory is, see, darkness is filling the earth. It is Opposition, it's not just darkness, it's not just a concept, it is real opposition. So he's addressing that, right? So he's encouraging them, point number two, you know, in view of the Lord's return, to stand strong through this persecutions as they were expecting the Lord to come, right? To stand strong. And he was saying, and he's saying, suffering will make them worthy of the kingdom. You must go and read 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 5. Very interesting comment. 
I've learned something. That through suffering for the Lord, not being dumb and stupid and do funny things and, and be unbiblical and do fleshly things, but when there's persecution, almost getting into a place of suffering, it shows your worthiness of the kingdom. Go and read it. It's pretty simple. It's very interesting what the Lord is saying, but we have to continue. Um, uh, and then again, Jesus will be revealed from heaven. And then he prayed for them. It's powerful. This is just, again, the Apostle Paul. He is starting off with recognizing their challenges. He is boasting. He is acknowledging them. Uh, um, where they are at, what they what they have done, what they have accomplished. He is acknowledging. Then he is addressing the issue, right? And then Paul is coming as apostle later on. And uh, you will receive the slides and you can go and have a look. It's so powerful. He prays for them that they will be strengthened by the Lord and that the Lord will count them worthy of their calling. Wow. God will count them worthy of their calling. We need to salute those people. Because they were standing. We know in those those times people were, you know, they died. They died. Now, I'm not saying that's the way that we are going. No, no, I'm not saying that. But people were strong, committed. They pledged allegiance to Jesus Christ no matter what. They didn't run away when, uh, you know, when, when the economy is not going and start, start serving mammon or start running away from the Lord. No, no. They were strong. They hold on to their faith. They hold on to and they persevere. And through they, they, they were tough. And then um, uh, about the coming of Jesus Christ, we're not going to get into this because of time. You can go and read it. Just again, he addressed the issue um, that uh, uh, there was confusion around the return of Jesus Christ, his own teaching. And he wrote two to three months later, he wrote another letter, a follow up just to bring some some clarity towards that Jesus Christ is, uh, and we've seen it, Jesus is returning. We will all be gathered, whether whether we are dead in the grave or, or died, not so much in the grave, but we, because we are, we, there is a place that we are already at, and those who are still alive will meet Jesus Christ. So he sorted that out. And also the issue, uh, there is a, going to be a, a big falling away, the apostasy, he's, he's saying that, and also the Antichrist. The lawless, the son of lawlessness will be revealed. Very interesting. It's part of the end, um, end times. Right. So he's, uh, and uh, and this is uh, also what, that I want to just to, to, to focus on just for two minutes. Um, remember I said we, uh, um, there was an issue of idleness. Um, and Paul is instructing the church to withdraw. You go and read this, to withdraw from those who are not following the apostolic tradition. They were not following the teachings. They were not following Paul's instruct, uh, instruction to be actively, uh, um, not just involved, but to work. It comes down to this, that Paul says, if you don't work, you know, in those times, there were opportunities to work. But if you're lazy and, 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 and uh, um, you know, uh, and you don't want to work, the Bible says you are not, uh, you know, um, you do, do do not deserve food. Um, you don't deserve, you don't, um, God sees you, you know, he's not against you, but you are, uh, um, in, Paul is saying it in, in so many words, that you are a weakling, and it's not the plan of God, it's not part, he wants you to be active, and go and read it, people, the word is very frank, we want to sugarcoat a lot of things, no, this is straight, you have to work, you have to be active, you know, you have to be, God will, when he comes, he wants to find us, in fact, he wants us, he wants to find us active in the kingdom of God, um, actively involved in the kingdom. Yes, not all of us are, are working full time and working. Yes, but what we do with the attitude of the kingdom, whatever you do, the word of God says, do it unto the Lord as you do it for the Lord. Whatever it is, you're a comp uh, IT person, you are a person that's on site in health or a medical field engineer. Do everything Paul is in fact saying as if you are doing it for the Lord. So Jesus is returning and expecting that those people will have that attitude. Those who are idle, those who are um, um, uh, just, uh, um, you know, uh, plainly more, more worse than laziness. They don't want to. They're not worthy of, listen, people, they're not worthy. They're not worthy of, 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 of who God's people are. They're not worthy. Yes, God loves them and he died for them. But when it comes to the collective, 
listen, those who don't want to, they are plain, plainly don't want to. And Paul is very frank. Let's not sugarcoat stuff. We have to address what is true and what is not true. We have to be open and straightforward, as Paul was. Um, and in that, we, you know, some people will be saved out of that um, challenge. I'm not referring to people who cannot find work. But with an attitude of I don't want to is an unbiblical, not the will of God attitude. Then Paul is encouraging um, uh, the church in Thessalonians that they should not grow weary in doing good. Because that's what happening. You know, they were expecting Jesus. Man, and it's, they were doing, they were working and so on. And, and uh, apparently there were some people that were saying, gee, was, you know, I'm giving my life. Is it worth it? Because he's not coming. And Paul is saying, don't grow weary in doing good. Right? Don't grow weary. But he says again, avoid those. It's very interesting, but very clear. Avoid those who don't want to walk according to the teachings of Apostle Paul, the teachings that he has received from Jesus Christ. This is a hard word. Go and read. It's a hard work because that those people are distractions. God loves every person, but if you don't want to, God says there comes a place that you avoid them. And in that avoiding, you might place that 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 uh, uh, um, that uh, place of of not feeling guilty. I don't know. That's uh, uh, um, but if you understand, they might just feel. Listen, there's there's something wrong. But He says specifically, avoid those who are against the teachings, the pure, clear teachings of Jesus Christ through Paul. It's very important. Yes, we love everybody and we want to accommodate uh, everybody, but to to what extent? Paul is saying there is a there is a line. There's definitely a line. Avoid those who are not willing. Right? You we can always love them, but God loves them more. You know, he still loves them, but avoid those. Give them to the Lord. Let God work with them. You know, uh, and sometimes it can be a distraction. I'm not saying, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, people that are listening, uh, uh, we need to be sensitive, but we also need to understand the kingdom of God is not wishy-washy. It's not on our terms. The kingdom of God and the body of Jesus Christ is based on the, on the terms of Jesus Christ. There is a standard, and Paul is addressing the standard. Do not, uh, do, do not be idle or do, do not be lazy. Do not not want to work. Do not, you, uh, there, there will be discipline. And in that discipline, that's what I was looking for. You know, avoiding those people can be discipline to them. We cannot reach out and love and keep on loving. There must be discipline. They, it's all on God's terms. You know what I'm saying? His terms, not our terms. We will always love people. Very, very important. And I almost want to, to close with this before we're just going to touch on something else. 2 Thessalonians 2. Verse 5 to 17, this is powerful words that uh, the Apostle Paul uh, um, is addressing. It's, a, it's not a motivation, motivational psyching up people to get them all excited and nice words. It's a very, it is encouragement. It is a powerful encouragement. There's some powerful words, specific, uh, 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 purposeful words that Paul is, is, is using when he's, when he's uh, encouraging the church in his final, you know, in some final uh, um, addressing the church. So then, brothers and sisters. So it's not just brothers. He also calls that you identify the sisters, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Um, but that's everybody. Everybody. He's addressing them. Wow. Stand firm. Wow. Stand firm. Now, what's the opposite of firm? Uh, loose. Don't be loose, loosely. Do not, but stand firm. It, 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 uh, you understand what it is. Stand firm. That's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, still what it, it's just what it is. Second thing is, hold fast. Hold fast to the teachings we pass on to you. Hold fast. If you look in the in context, if you look in the, if you go in and do some research around this text, it says embrace it, make it your own, live on what you have heard, right? 
live and the whole process again of transformation. Think of it. Eat it. It's really that 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 uh, med- meditating on the word of God. But receive it and act on it. Receive it and act on it. If you don't act on it, you lose. You lose. You are not abiding. You are not holding fast. But holding fast to the teachings that comes from Jesus Christ, whether by word or mouth or by letter. Very interesting. Word of mouth or by letter. So whether it was in person, Paul himself, or the letter he was was writing. Remember, they did not have the Bible. They had Paul's, uh, uh, his, his own mouth and words, and then also his words or what he knew on, on a letter. It was a, a piece of paper that every, or whatever it was, what was written on. Live by that. He's instructing them and encouraging. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself, wow, and God our Father, not just Jesus, and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave, or, uh, gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage your hearts. Remember where the Thessalonians were at? There was confusion, expecting Jesus. Now Jesus is not coming. There's persecution and there's a bit of confusion. Paul straightening out. He's, he's giving them some clarity around things. So he speak, in, uh, 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 and he's saying to them, encouragement and, and, and good hope. Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Wow, that is that is really powerful from the Apostle Paul that has written this letter to, to, to Thessalonians. And again, I just want to sum it up. I just want to sum it up where Paul is um, addressing the three issues around. First of all, the, uh, the pertinent issue was the, per, uh, the issue of the end times or more so the issue of the return of Jesus Christ. So I want to 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 tell you that that is a very important issue. And in fact, out of the mouth of Jesus, he was saying and and the last words, the last command is saying, go out and go and preach uh, or make disciples rather of all nations and baptize them. And then he says also in that portion, he says, uh, and I will return. I will come back. I will. That is a promise. It is going to happen in our lifetime or in the next generation or in the next generation. Wow, it's going to happen. Are you looking forward to the return of Jesus? Hmm. Maybe you haven't thought of it lately. Maybe during lockdown, a lot of people start thinking about it because there was something out of the ordinary that was happening on the planet. So suddenly everybody is thinking around this and that and that. So that was what he was. He was sorting that out. Jesus is definitely coming. He was, and then also uh, the issue of persecution that we are also facing somehow or another at your workplace, wherever you are at. There is something that's that's there. I tell you, people, you know it. I'm not pinpointing people specifically, but you just feel it. The way people are agreeing on certain issues in the world certain things that they are saying about, you know, there's many ways to God and, uh, you know, we need to love everybody um, and they're breaking down the patterns of the Lord or how he created his creation, um, you know, and we can we can pinpoint that. I'm not doing that tonight. I'm just saying to you, Jesus is coming back, right? There is persecution that Paul is addressing. And he's also addressing the whole issue of not just idleness, but those who are not following or willing to follow, avoid. Yes, we must always evangelize, always evangelize. But there there are people that are idle, who don't want to work, that even are against. And we have to make a stand, a firm stand, not to chase them away, uh, to chase them away. But we need to identify those people with agendas. Hmm, interesting. Why am I saying that? Because it is a fact. People around us, there might be distractions. There's, there's friends of yours that are not in line. People you call friends, uh, even family members that are not in line. And they, they having your attention on, on stuff and keeping you away. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should avoid them. Sure. Pastor, this is but hard. That's the word of God. You still love them. You can still pray for them. What is God saying to you about them? But there is there is clarity around these things. And uh, this is what the Lord is saying. So 
Yeah, so this is it for tonight to Thessalonians. Very interesting, powerful. And uh, if there's any questions, if there's any questions, you can ask me. And uh, this was also here. So if there's any questions, please just not raise your hand because I cannot see that. But you can just uh, say something or any comment. Maybe if there's a comment or person that want to say something, please do before we before we close. Surely, I, I, I surely this topic should have stirred something in your mind. Hello, Pastor Anes. Yes, Pastor Lambert. Maybe I can just add something. As a belief, Pastor Donkey. And uh, I, I will just say, um, you know, uh, uh, I just think uh, I'm in full agreement. And let me just say this: I just think us that year, you know, when we hear the word, we must respond. And um, Sure. I just think uh, uh, it's so important because uh, uh, it's again just about the the seriousness of our lives, sure. and and where where are we heading and where are we going, and so many people have lost just that, you know, let's say purpose. Jesus is coming back, and and so many people have lost sight of 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 that, and uh, you know. I'm just saying, and, and that was what you're saying. Just get back again to the, the, the real the real things. And the real yeah. things is 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 God and his kingdom and Jesus. Sure. And 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 uh, you know for me it's just uh, 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 am I am I watching too much TV? <laughs> you know, I must, I must just I must just look at my own life and look at uh, uh, wait, I must just look at my own life and um, am I watching too much TV? Uh, or you know, am I am I just too busy with this or too busy with that? Yeah. Um, and just just again, just just approach my life with a little bit more, not now being religious or, or but just yeah. you know a little bit more, just a little bit with a little bit more seriousness. I think yeah. just just get myself back on track again. And uh, so thank you, uh, Paul Stannis. Jesus is coming back, and we're excited, <laughs> and we, we look forward for the future. We have a great future. We thank God. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, Pastor Lambert. Yeah, great, uh, Pastor Lambert. Uh, great insight and and uh, um, and thank you for that because that is people. I endorse that. This is the truth. You know, Pastor Lambert is uh, speaking about TV. You know, I'm also watching TV. I love my sport. You know, I love that. I'm ch checking out this new, the new rugby there in the in the, in, the, in the you know our, our teams playing there in the UK. But I'm just asking myself, why am I doing that? Yes, it's exciting and it's wonderful. Hey, but what is the thing? You know, the balance, not even a balance. There's not such thing. But do I get excited about the Lord on a Saturday afternoon? I'm not putting us in a box and I don't want to really, I'm not doing that. But Pastor Lambert is touching on something and the word of God is saying, Jesus is coming back. What is everything about? There's so much, and I'm closing with this. There is so much happening on this planet that uh, we are so entrenched in the world system and how the world operates. As Pastor Vincent is saying, everything under the sun, we are being manipulated. And as robots, we just give ourselves to that. And it's, and it's the way of life. It is really the way of life because we are born into this. However, there is a Jesus Christ and a kingdom. It is eternal. This is just for a while. It will pass away. <laughs> but the kingdom and the love and the plan of God for us is eternal. And I just finally, just to tickle your mind about something. Do not think that your purpose will end at the return of Jesus Christ. You will be surprised. The everlasting life is full of surprises that we would have never thought. Don't think you're going to sit in a house and drink coffee there. Now, I know I'm, I, I, it's, it's really a tongue-in-cheek example. There is much purpose, much purpose than we've ever think or thought of in an eternal kingdom. It is, uh, we, our minds cannot get there. So we're living this and also with what Pastor Lambert is, is, has, has added. Uh, the, the question, what are we busy with really? Yeah, so I leave that with you. I leave it with you. And have a good evening. And uh, Pastor uh, Hannah, sorry, can I can I quickly intercede? We we have a question. Intercede, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, 
we were just, Rosam actually raised the question because we were talking about, we had a phenomenal sell last night and then we were talking about power hour last week and I was away, but they brought up what was discussed and um, we were talking about the sleeping and um, I don't know the answers and we thought maybe we can throw it out and you can maybe just help us get an answer, not now today, but like going forward is what happened to the people who died before Christ came and now we <laughs> after Christ died and like um, the Barabbas on the side of Jesus where he died and, and Jesus said, today I will see you in paradise. So, you know, and I've been talking to people today and trying to figure out things and, and, I, and it's, it's exciting because I want to know. And yeah, the one person yeah. said to me, it's more like, okay, so do we not go straight to heaven when we die now? Because the sleeping is now confusing us. Yeah. Is where yeah. do our soul, someone said that our souls go into like a chamber until we all return to the case. So the, the sleeping <laughs> that are dead before, yeah. before Christ, they will go up first who are in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it, Great it, question. It, you know, Rosden um, raised it, so I thought I'm yeah. going to raise it because you raised it, because I also want to know. Yeah, listen, yeah, so that in itself will take some time. That teaching we, we, is. We committed, yeah, we definitely committed just to 9 o'clock, and I'm not running away from it. But 100%. what I, I'm telling you, there is different, um, surely we're not going to be in a chamber, it's not biblical. We yeah. will be with him. He said to the person next to him on the cross, you will be with me in paradise. In paradise yeah. So it is wherever Jesus is, people, that is the heaven. And wherever Jesus is, is the kingdom of God. But there will be certain almost areas, not areas like sub, not at all, but different places of Pastor venzel has got the right words of where you will manifest. Right. Yes. So there, there will there is a place where Jesus is already with those people. They are very active. You know, um, um, definitely active. They are. They are with Abraham. They are with when Jesus took the keys from from the devil when he went down and he took the keys of death. Right. And there's yeah. a whole crowd that followed him. Then they were not in 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 in, uh, in darkness, but they were in a place. Now Jesus took all those people, and they are in another place with him. And people, so it's not really the whole issue of how is that place now looking. The whole issue is the biggest issue that we are with him constantly, even now, even though we are manifesting on the earth. One day we will manifest. If you die, you will manifest. You will manifest with him, right? Even in bodily form with him will just be another body with him. Then there will be another way. Uh, after that, there will be a millennium going. This crazy stuff. I don't want to put my mind to it. Very interesting. A thousand years where Jesus comes back and he rules with us. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah, that's the crazy. But again, we don't know much about it. But it and then there will be a, a, a another event place of opposition. I don't even know it's opposition. Uh, the white throne judgment, but it all speaks of eternity. But people just finally, we are connected to Jesus Christ. He is in us. That is the best place. Yes, we're not there with our bodies yet, right? Or constantly, we're not there. We will be with the return of Jesus, right? But we have Jesus in every form. There's not, he's not less in us than he will ever be in eternity or at the white throne judgments. Uh, we've got Christ. That is what it's about. That's what we have. That is a revelation in whatever place we are at. There will be a time, I'll mention it to a team, that we can get into that and we might just get a specialist. But we don't want to be bogged down. It's good to know. It's already... But Jesus Christ is the greatest revelation that we need to follow. I'm not running away from it. We'll get back to you on this to see if we can get some more clarity. Today was just touching here and there on two Thessalonians. But great stuff. Great question that we need to, to go and investigate. We'll get back to you on that. So on that, on that we need to go. It's already past nine. Have a good evening. Um, you've listened and heard. Receive it. And the question again that Pastor Lambert brought up, what are we busy with? Not a, a just a question to think about. And maybe you should answer that question. No condemnation, but maybe it's just a good question to think about. Uh, have a good evening and uh, we'll chat and see whenever that happens soon. All the best. May God bless you.